आप ही देख रहे उस कांदर कॉल है ओके इन दो मिनट यू फुल फुल चार्जिंग है हां चार्जिंग मार के रख दे इधर मैं आप लोग को देखना क्या करूं क्या करूं क्या करूं ब्रेक इट ना प्रभु जी हां जी ठीक है हां शिवम प्रभु धन्यवाद का नाम था हरे कृष्ण ये मैंने ना दिस ड्यूटी ठीक है अंदर अभी बात है हां ए इंचार्ज कौन है किचन इंचार्ज चार्ज इधर ही लगा दी किस किस को राजशेखर प्रभु शुभमन प्रभु हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दीपिका माता हरे कृष्ण शुभमन प्रभु हरे कृष्ण श्रीनिवास प्रभु श्रीमस प्रभु पदमा माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी रवीना माता जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण राजशेखर प्रभु वी सी यू ऑन वीडियो एंड वी सी यू ऑन यू माइट बी माय ब्रदर इन लव प्रभु ओह राजशेखर प्रभु हेलो या प्रभु आप कहां से इंडिया में हैदराबाद हां हैदराबाद से थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग या थैंक यू वेलकम एंड कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन या हरे कृष्ण ओके सो वी विल स्टार्ट नाउ आई सी Is it Om Shankar Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Neetu Mathur is also around. Ah, uh, she is actually taking care of the kids. So today I am on this. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. Now we have. Okay. Okay. The reason we. uh move from uh like we wanted to make the group more focused so that uh, uh it's easy to ask question easy to interact at the same time um uh, uh, i know who is in the group it's close group and then i can also keep a personal touch with all of you that's the reason we wanted it more focused now we will begin uh bhagavad gita today many of you have attended some of the sessions of bhagavad gita but i think <laughs> unfortunately not anyone here could finish we began and here and there and it will be very helpful if we can somehow get a hold of to some extent get a hold of um, what's in bhagavad gita <coughs> now i see anu prabhu mai par prabhu are ne mai anu prabhu is your brother hello is my friend friend okay anu prabhu uh, hare krishna aap kahan se hain uh, hello prabhu uh, hum pune mein rehte hain main hyderabad se hu abhi pune mein rehte hain Thank you for joining, Anu Prabhu. Yeah, welcome. Okay, so I'm thinking if we are missing anyone. Yeah, I think we are good. Okay, so um, we will begin with Bhagavad Gita second chapter today. I'll give a short summary of the first chapter, and then we discuss the second chapter today. Devashish Prabhu, I see you.
do you all see the presentation yes uh, yes prabhu ji okay okay maybe we'll sing this small bhajan for 2 minutes and then we begin the discussion jay radha madhava kunj bihari madhava kunj bihari jay radha madhava kunj bihari गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर जय गोपी जनवल्ला गिरीवरधारी गिरीवर ओ यशोदनंदना ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदनंदना ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरा वन चारी यमुना तीरा यमुना तीरा वन चारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी आई से स्मॉल प्रेयर्स एंड देन वील बिगेन ओम अज्ञान तिमिरंधस ज्ञानंजना शलाकया चक्षुर्मिलित ये नस्मे श्री गुरुवर श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये स्वयं रूपा पदा मह्यम ददाति स्वाक वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री युतापद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णव श्री रूप सागर जात सहगना रघुनाथ तम सजीव साधवैत सवधूत परीजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाद सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखा नृपन हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता सप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावन विभिषानुमी हरि वाछा कल्प कृपा पतिता नाम पावे वैष्णवे नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे देवशीष प्रभु हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम धन्यवाद प्रणाम थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग यस ओके सो वी विल स्टार्ट विद सेकंड चैप्टर आई विल गिव अ शॉर्ट समरी ऑफ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर नाउ 
the first chapter is the bhagavad gita actually starts mainly from second chapter because in the first chapter krishna does not speak a word bhagavad gita is the most famous book for spiritual education all people may have different different beliefs and different different faiths but one book which everybody and every religion refers to is bhagavad gita it is uh, second largest selling book in the world and um, it was spoken 5000 years back by krishna to arjuna this was spoken on a battlefield it was a dharm yudh where the dharm yudh basically between the people who were following dharma the pandavas and the people who were following adharma the kauravas and many of you know the history of mahabharat where uh, maharaj yudhishthira was the rightful higher of the kingdom at that time the kingdom was for the entire world there was one king it was not like india america didn't even exist america is just 500 years old so that time the entire earth has one ruler one king and uh, yudhishthira maharaj was supposed to enthrone the king but because he was very small the now pandu was given the kingdom he was the king but pandu died the father of yudhishthira maharaj so yudhishthira maharaj has to become the king but yudhishthira maharaj was too small and all the pandavas were too small so kingdom was given temporarily in the hand of dhritarashtra dhritarashtra was blind and uh, the intention was once yudhishthira maharaj and the pandava became little older then yudhishthira maharaj would take over the kingdom but because dhritarashtra was small the acting king at that point of time was duryodhan and because he was in power duryodhan developed a strong attachment to kingdom and uh, duryodhan was also very envious of the pandavas because the pandavas were respected more than duryodhan and uh, they were righteous and everybody loved them so and they were good at archery arjun even uh, was able to shot the eye of a bird and duryodhan could not when dronacharya called one by one everyone so over many instances duryodhan first of all was very envious of pandavas at the same time he was very attached to kingdom so duryodhan tried to poison bhima he tried to bring them in a house of flag and tried to kill them he played a game of dice which was a cheating because shakuni's um, grandfather was a mystical person so anybody who play with shakuni has to lose he tried to disrupt their wife they sent him 14 hour they sent them 14 years into vanvas so duryodhan tried all sort of means to somehow or other deceive kill cheat pandava so he can remain the king and at one point of time um, krishna himself went as a messenger and said uh, at least give pandavas five villages and you remain the king and he said i will not give kingdom equivalent to the tip of a needle also no matter what and uh, it was a dharm yudh krishna says in uh, bhagavad gita 4 chapter that he descends to establish dharma and to any he let or remove a dharma and this was one of the purpose of krishna's descent one of the external reasons establish dharma establish pandavas so this is the fight and um, this is happening in kurukshetra which is considered a holy place and on one side there there are like millions of soldiers present on the battlefield on one side kauravas on one side pandavas kauravas were almost 1.5 times bigger in army yet their destruction was doomed because krishna was on the side of pandavas and uh, they they both blew their conch shell on both the parties which signifies the beginning of the war and uh, arjun was little bit overwhelmed with grief so arjun requested krishna please take my chariot in the middle of the two armies so i can see with whom i am going to fight today and krishna agreed krishna was acting as a chariot driver of arjuna 
and krishna took a vow that i will one side will be my entire army one side will be me and i will not fight and i'll be the chariot driver so arjun accepted krishna and arjuna chariot driver was krishna he took arjun in the middle of the two armies like there is pandavas and there is kauravas so pandavas was here and krishna took the chariot right in the middle and then arjuna could see very close sightedness uh, he could see bhishma dev his grandfather he saw dronacharya his own teacher he saw his own brothers he saw his near and dear and loved ones and arjuna was overwhelmed with grief he didn't although he had fought many many wars because of attachment he became weak and he had no strength to fight and he gave krishna one after the other five reasons that krishna i shall not fight arjuna was not in chapter 1 arjuna was not in a mood to listen he was not in a mood to accept any argument against fighting so krishna stayed quiet the whole time and second chapter is when krishna starts speaking one of the reason arjun gave is if i kill them i will incur sinful reactions another reason he gave is um, um, how can i kill um, my own family members uh, compassion another reason he gave is what is the use of becoming the king even if i fight and i win because the kingdom will be tainted with blood another reason he gave is all the males will die all the women will become widowed and uh, the woman needs to be sheltered needs to be protected and when they are widowed then unscrupulous men or unrighteous men or unholy men will exploit them emotionally and uh, unwanted progeny will come and the whole uh, family tradition will be destroyed and then so these were the four reasons the fifth reason he gave is i don't know what to do i don't know what is right i don't know should i fight because if i fight all these things will happen if i if i fight if i win i i get the kingdom but it's tainted with blood if i fight if i lose i die and if i don't fight then i am a chatriya i have to live by begging and i can't even do that so i don't know what to do and this is where the first chapter ended where arjuna sat down on the chariot and he said krishna i shall not fight now this bhagavad gita although spoken and happening in the battlefield of kurukshetra one of the servant of uh, dhritarashtra dhritarashtra was the acting king at this point of time and he was serving in hastinapur which is currently known as delhi he had a palace there and his servant was sanjay and sanjay was empowered by his spiritual master vidyas so anyone who receives the mercy of spiritual master even if he is without legs he can cross the mountain if he is without eyes he can see anything can happen by the mercy of spiritual master so sanjay by the mercy of vedvyas could see to the utmost detail exactly what is happening in kurukshetra and uh, dhritarasht as sanjay this is the first verse of bhagavad gita of first chapter now my my sons and the pandus have assembled in the battlefield of kurukshetra what did they do what's going on what's happening can you summarize and in the end he sat down with tears in his eyes his body was shivering and trembling with grief stricken he told krishna i shall not fight and that's where the first chapter end any question so far okay no. okay now now this is where we begin the second chapter it's called the <clears throat> content of gita summarized is the summary of bhagavad gita now <clears throat> every chapter is divided into acronym that give us a overview of what exactly is in the chapter so the acronym for this chapter is gita and as you see here g stands for guru means in first 10 verses <clears throat> describes about importance of accepting spiritual master this is where arjuna surrendered to krishna 
and said, now I accept you as my spiritual master. I have lost all composure. I don't know what is that, what is wrong. Please instruct me. Then this is the first instruction that Guru gives is identity. <clears throat> that we are not the physical bodies. When we identify ourselves with the physical body, then um, we develop fear. And uh, uh, because fear comes because of unknown. Because we, we don't know that we are eternal. But when we think we are the body, then anything happened to the body, fear comes. Then P stands for two duties. Or Krishna tell Arjuna that you have two responsibilities. You have your responsibility as a Grahasthashram, as a Vanaprasthashram, as a Brahmachari Ashram, as a Sanyas Ashram, as a Brahmana, as a Chatriya, as a Vaishya, as a Shudra. Whatever is your Varna, whatever is your Ashram, you have a duty that you have to perform. Along with that, you also perform a spiritual duty. So Krishna is telling these two duties he is describing to Arjuna. And the last is, if you do that, then you become Atmaram or self-satisfied. So as we see in the bracket, there are total 72 verses. And 1 to 10, 11 to 30, 31 to 53, 54 to 72. It's a breakdown. So this acronym helps us to understand what is the common theme that is discussed in second chapter. Many times when we don't have the acronym, but we read the entire second chapter, then it's difficult to remember what exactly was the content of the chapter. What all did we cover? But this way we can remember the main themes in this chapter. Now we begin with G, which stands for Guru. Okay. Now, can someone read? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, how have these inferiorities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets, but to infamy. So after giving such apparently wonderful reasons by Arjun, Krishna, this is the first verse Krishna spoke. And Krishna said, how have these impurities come upon you? So all these reasons Krishna is considering impurities. Why? Because all these reasons were Arjuna trying to hide his attachment in the name of philosophy. Arjuna had fought many, many battles. Where was the reason of women becoming widowed? Where were the reason of compassion? Where was the reason of sinful reaction and going to hell? Where were or where were the reason that if I gain the victory, the victory will be tainted with blood? Where were all those reasons in the past? But because Arjuna could not say these reasons, he is giving such nice, logically convincing reasons out of... Even Arjuna could not identify that he has become weak because of his family members, because of his attachment. And Krishna could identify. So Guru can see even more than what we can see within ourselves. And Krishna is telling, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not befitting, not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets, but to infamy. Okay, someone can read this. Maybe everyone can participate. We encourage participation. O oh, son of Partha, do not yield to this, this degraded, de degrading importance. In, it does not become you. Give up such pity weakness of heart and arise, O oh, chastiser of the enemy. Give up such petty weakness of the heart. So Krishna could see that Arjuna has become weak because of his attachment. And... Uh, Krishna is basically telling Arjuna, you are not like this. How have you become so weak? Give up this degrading impotency. Okay. Uh, so now this is Arjuna telling. Someone can read this. Yes. Um, nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of this Rashtra, we should not care to live. Yet they are standing 
now standing before us on the battlefield so this is arjuna telling Arj- this before that arjuna is telling how can i kill my own family members and uh, and then here it is telling no do we know which is better conquering them or being conquered by them should we kill them or should we be defeated by them if we kill the sons of dhritarashtra we should not care to live <laughs> yet they are standing before us on the battlefield so arjun is still little bit in the argument mode where he is trying to convince krishna that it's not his weakness it's not his impotency it's not his attachment how can we kill how can we kill our family member how can we kill sons of dhritarashtra how can we live after killing them how is it possible but in the next verse we see okay before that making good decision what happen now this particular verse like you see before it says not do we know which is better conquering them or being conquered by them so that shows that arjuna was unable to make decision what to do and that's the point where he actually surrenders to krishna so the question may come that so many things happen in our life and we also sometimes have to make decisions now there are many ways to make decision one way is indecision means do not make a decision that does not help another is indiscretion means you make a rash decision without thinking without thinking you say something without thinking you make laws and rules and without thinking you act and then it comes back to us <laughs> we have to pay a heavy price that is in passion then there is introspection you think a lot and then you think it should be done this way this is a right decision this is not a right thing to do and then you make a decision but this is not the perfect solution also because many time even after thinking a lot you don't know what to do so this does not always help and the most important is inspiration what is the lord telling in your heart what is your inspiration within you that's the way you can make best decision and where the inspiration comes from it comes from guide book guide book means scriptures so you see how devotees have like pralad dhruv maharaj how they acted when they faced difficulties what were their consciousness were they in the mood to fight retaliate become angry um finding fault in them and was that their reaction or was their reaction taking a humble position respecting others even when they are not respected what was their reaction so based on based on that one get an inspiration that i should so mahajana yena katha sapantha means following the footsteps of great acharyas these great acharyas by the idle behavior has has left before us how we should act if we follow them then just like how they achieve the mercy of the lord we can also achieve the mercy of the lord another is spiritual teachers we can ask uh, some some spiritual teachers how do we act in this in this situation and how spiritual teachers can help is they have good understanding of shastra so although we may not have read the scriptures because they have read the scriptures they can relate our situation with the scripture and can give us a a perfect solution because they know the scriptures and also these spiritual teachers may have an connection with the lord in their heart and uh, like once as we advance we develop a deeper connection with the super soul in our heart and super soul is the is the best personality the supreme lord himself from whom we can actually take instruction and guidance but in now the third is super soul as we advance we develop a relationship with the super soul ourselves in the beginning stages it may be difficult to understand if my if if i want to act in a certain way is that inspiration coming from the super soul or maybe it's coming from ego or maybe it's coming from envy from from all these uh, different uh, um, angles it may come so 
better to check the decision we make with the scriptures if it matches with the scriptures we are good but if we are in confusion better to take consult with uh, some spiritual teachers to see if we made the right decision especially if we are confused any question here okay okay someone can read yeah prabhu ji now i am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of mis miserly weak uh, weakness in this condition i am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me now i am your disciple and a soul surrounded unto you please instruct me so finally arjun came to this conclusion that actually i am weak hearted um this was lord's mercy on him and he said okay i have lost all composure because of my zealous weakness because of my attachment i don't know what to do um i don't want to fight at the same time it's their view i i should fight so i think i have lost my discrimination power because of my weakness so in this condition i am asking you to please help me now i accept you as my spiritual master i am your disciple and i surrender to you um please show me the way so this is one way to make to move in the right direction is to take guidance from spiritual master okay now navya mata ji yes prabhu ji hari krishna i am sorry you have to go through it again next week we will be third chapter that will be good yeah uh, today i forgot <laughs> that's why i joined late okay thank you mata hari krishna so there is a video therefore the vidhi marg vidhi marg oh but therefore the vidhi marg vidhi marg means to walk under the direction of the spiritual master just like apprentice in a factory one is working as apprentice he does not know also but gradually when he becomes practice Then he gets a good job, hmm. good salary. Is it not? Hmm. Similarly, this is apprenticeship. To rise early in the morning, offer mangalarti and bhog. These are so many rules and regulations. Then naturally there will be a spontaneous love. Hmm. Yeah. In the beginning there is no spontaneous love. Hmm. One has to work under the direction of the spiritual master and shastra, <laughs> scripture. Yes, they were they were saying that this was then a form of idol worship because there was no realization in the service. No, no. Even there is no realization. It is not idol. It it, it is idol worship. So, Shri Prabhupada speaks of three topics in this video. The first topic, uh, this disciple asked this question: Why so many rules and regulations in spiritual life? Why we have to rise in the morning? Why we have to? chant our rounds or we do we do chant the hari krishna ma mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari and why we have to read bhagavad gita why do we have to do all these things and prabhupada is telling just like somebody he joins the company he doesn't know what to do then he is trained under a professional and then he becomes trained and then he get a good salary likewise at this point of time we may not have a deep spiritual realizations but when we work under direction of the scriptures then scriptures guarantee perfection and uh, that's our rules and regulations and when this becomes self realized um, it's eternal benefit for you okay and the second topic here now prabhupada is speaking is uh, idol worship some people say uh, why do i worship stone this is just a stone now prabhupada is addressing that for the rascal not for the devil
Prabhuji, we are not able to hear the audio. I think you have muted. Uh, Prabhuji, I think uh, audio is not coming out. You are not able to hear, Prabhuji. We are not able to hear the audio, Prabhuji. I think organizer Prabhuji can unmute it, right? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah now okay, Prabhuji. Yeah, now okay. This is not hyperbolic. Now, just to just to summarize, so we have. I'll just repeat. And this question is asked: What about idol worship? And Prabhupada said, "It's not idol worship; it's deity worship. The difference between idol and deity is when you go to a store." and you buy a statue it's an idol it's made of material elements but when it is installed in the temple then there is a process mentioned in the scriptures which is called plan pratishta plan pratishta means you invite the lord into into that statue and then it becomes a deity so idol is a stone and deity is non different from the supreme lord and Prabhupada gave an example of um, uh, a post office a post office is just a box if it's not an authorized box then you put a letter and the letter will will remain there for millions of years and it will not go anywhere but if the the box is authorized by post office then you put a letter and the letter will go to post office and will go to the required destination likewise although supreme lord is everywhere these temple and these deities are like authorized post office box means you pray there and it will go to the supreme lord although the lord is present everywhere agreed then this is authorized and uh, the supreme lord because we have a material body we cannot see the Supreme Lord in a spiritual body because our eyes are material. We can only deal with the matter. We cannot deal with the spirit in our current situation, in an impure state. So the Lord is so merciful that he appears in a form with which we can relate in this body. And this Krishna himself tells to Uddhav in Srimad Bhagavatam that worship me in my deity form. That's the only way to interact with the Lord in a human life and as we become self-realized then within our mind we can perceive the lord also that is a higher stage and okay now we come to the third section which is about spiritual master 
not. He has had no art. Scripture go very simple. And the man is going to be funny. But still he will do it. Still he will do it. That means want of knowledge. He is embarrassed. He is so much with ignorance that he cannot restrain it. Therefore, don't do it, then he remains all as pure. All is pure. Initiation means he's purified. But if he does not contaminate again, then he remains purified. But if he purposely contaminate again, then it is for. Otherwise, during the time of initiation is completely free from all sin. The spiritual master takes all the reaction of his sinful life. This is what Krishna said. This is the recent statement in the we have discussed in the Chaitanya Chaitanya. It is not a joke accepting a disciple accident. It is not a joke. Very important task. Uh, it is not that joke. They will pay me thirty-five dollars and I give you tell you and say yes, and I push your eyes and you see the light and you know. <laughs> These are the world of them going to help. So, something short, a disciple. So, when we accept a spiritual master, it is said by the mercy of Krishna, as we become sincere in our spiritual practices, Krishna sends us a bona fide or a true spiritual master, and that is the mercy of the Lord. And once we accept a spiritual master, then spiritual master takes us to Krishna. So by the mercy of Krishna, one gets a guru. And by the mercy of guru, then one actually gets Krishna. Now, we are, we have so much, we may have so many sinful reactions uh, because of which we have so many attachments and inclinations in material life. When we get initiated, the spiritual master remove all sinful reaction. And what he does is by the power of his own uh, bhakti by the power of his own devotion to the Lord he burns the sinful reaction of a disciple because our bhakti is not so pure even though we may practice spiritual life we may not be able to do it by ourselves but the spiritual master does it for us and when we get initiated we become pure because we become free from all sinful reaction but then we have a choice to become impure again so uh, also one cannot make significant advancement in spiritual life without accepting a spiritual master. One can start, one can go for some time, but at some point of time, one needs a spiritual master. Otherwise, our spiritual life will be filled with so many obstacles, so many ups and downs that will not be able to stabilize ourselves or sincerely practice throughout our life. So, mercy of spiritual master is what saves a disciple from the cycle of birth and death. Okay, any question here?
all right okay so then the the second topic is identity that is the first instruction that guru gives is identity and as you can see um, in this picture from the small child to youth to grown up to old age to death and after that the soul is again transferred to the womb of a mother so this is called cycle of birth and death or in other words we are spiritual we are spiritual beings okay someone can read this never was there a time when i did not exist nor you nor all these kings nor in the future shall any of us cease to be as the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at death a sober person is not bewildered by such a change mm. so krishna is telling we i was I, i was always existing and i will continue to exist in the future and not only me arjun you and all these kings were always existing in the past and will always continue to exist in the future in other words we are eternal in other words we don't die when we die or when the body dies we don't die we continue and we are not born in the womb of a mother but we are given a physical form but the form but the but we are actually krishna explains in seven chapter we are part and parcel of krishna and when the father impregnates the woman that's how the soul is transferred from the father to the mother and the mother gives a form around and then the soul continues and when the body dies we move on we move on to our next destination based on our activities in this life so in other words arjuna you cannot kill bhishma dev you cannot kill dronacharya it's just a dharm yudh this is a material world where dharma has to prevail and that's why i have come here to prevail dharma whatever is needed so do as i say now as the embodied soul passes boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at time of death and a sober person is not bewildered by such a change now signs of the self we are spirit souls and we have a subtle body around the soul which is made of mind intelligence and ego we have the mind we have intelligence and we have ego and then we have a gross body which is made up of earth water fire air ether so soul and then subtle element and then the gross element now when there is reincarnation the soul and the subtle body moves on and accepts another gross body in other words when we when we die we move on to the womb of another mother the mind also goes the intelligence also goes and the ego also goes in other words the subtle body goes so when we come to this material world we get a mind and uh, we continue cycle of birth and death but throughout the cycle of birth and death we have the same mind we have the same intelligence we have the same ego but we only keep on changing the cross body but when there is liberation then we leave the mind intelligence ego also in the material world and just the soul goes to the spiritual world okay any question up to this point dr uh, ji when when one person reincarnates uh, he forgets everything right yeah it is mentioned that <clears throat> when the soul is in the womb of a mother the soul remembers up to 100 lives in the past but the moment he comes out uh, from the womb of a mother maya captures and he forgets but when he leaves the body he see things as they are when he is in the womb he sees things as they are but when he comes out maya captures it is it all right Uh, but prabhu uh, what my question is uh, we just uh, discussed that the intelligence and the ego are carry forward to the yeah. next life also right yeah. 
but we actually forget and then uh, they they will come out again uh, as as we uh, as a person grows up yeah yeah so we forget but the impressions remain the desires remain they are carried over in uh, the subtle body like uh, if we if we have a desire to become very rich then we die being a poor then in the next birth we develop a desire i want to become rich similar thing happened with the dhruv maharaj he had a desire to become rich and when he was born when he was neglected by his father he wanted a kingdom bigger than lord brahma also that desire came to him on a small disrespectful situation because it's a previous life desire what happens when we desire and it is unfulfilled unfulfilled then the lord in our heart super soul make a note of it and when we go forward then the super soul reminds us of our desires so subtle body carries all the impression um subtle body is the one who actually um um has a certain amount of passion a certain amount of goodness a certain amount of ignorance these three modes all these Uh, how we behave how much anger we have how much lust we have how much greed we have all these things is a sub- is a subject of subtle body so we see different child when they are born some find their happiness in beating each other and some find their happiness in being silent and sitting in one corner it's all different subtle bodies coming from previous lives prabhu ji uh prabhu ji based on the desire he will next life will be determined or based on the previous karmas in life uh, uh, next world life will be determined Prabhuji. yeah next next life is determined based on our desire at the time of death and karma combined both uh, if we desire to become the king and we don't have karma to get a human birth we can become a lion we are a king at the same time karma didn't allow okay Prabhuji, buddhi is uh, part of this mind or the soul or the subtle body? Yeah, buddhi is intelligent. Chitta is mind. Okay. For example, we uh, we are. I mean, I am learning few things about Krishna consciousness. So these things will be carried forward to the next chapter, right? Ah, uh, Krishna says in uh, uh, which chapter Krishna says? Krishna says in. Uh, Second chapter only. Neha bikama na shosti pratta vaya na vidyate. Solpa mo piya se dharma se trayate mahato bhayat. That even if you make little advancement in your Krishna consciousness, it will carry forward in your next life. But even if you become a PhD in your next life, we again start from LKG, UKG. So mundane education, every anything material is left behind, bro. All all material things is left behind. but your advancement go with you that's why discussing bhagavad gita chanting the holy names of the lord is the best investment of time because it has eternal returns any other question all right so here is a small video on the science of soul so past present future can you hear the audio yes prabhu ji okay oh yes sir so past present future you exist the body changes is it not clear that's that's clear yeah so that for yeah. the conclusion that when he not have this body he will have another body you are sitting here if you don't sit here you go that does not mean you are sitting uh, opportunity is lost you are sitting here 
you see somewhere similarly the change of body is going on therefore the conclusion is that after you give up this body you have another one as you have already done what is the difficulty to understand it is seeming difficult to is that one um while the body is different from that of a boy the body must be different therefore that is called change of body unless it is a different body what is the change the memory is there of the boy mm-hmm. and or the the spirit is there mm-hmm. the memory sometimes we may not remember uh, just like your this child he may not have memory when he was very small but you have got memory you know when he was a small child you are doing something or some do he was playing with some cats and dog but he does not remember that but he remembers it so simply because he has forgotten does that mean that the incidences were not present so this argument is not very strong because i cannot remember you do not remember so many things huh? but the fact is this that you are changing from this body to this body to this body therefore the conclusion should be that after this body i will accept another body and that's the fact as you have accepted in this life from one body to another body there is a process how to accept it similarly under the same process you accept another body when this body is no longer useful uh, just like at night you give up this body you take your subtle body and you go to somewhere you are sleeping at, in your room but you are working at a different place don't you do that so because the, this body is still useful that for you come to back again this body and in the morning you wake up with this body so death means when this body is useless you do not come to this body we accept another body this is called death that subtle body takes you from this body to the home of another mother by nature's direction that this soul shall get this kind of body so the soul is enter uh, in the home of another mother's body and then the body is prepared by the mother's blood and flesh and when the body is sufficiently capable of working itself then it comes up, comes again and begins its work this is birth and death the soul is eternal therefore as sober man should think the wise will like change my body why this trouble i shall take that is human sense when he find me eternal why not my eternal body it cannot exist and why shall i die this is human sense unless one comes to this understanding is animal because animal by nature's law 
is going on. He does not know. Then a human form of body, when he understands that I'll have to change his body, I'll have to get another body, then the question is, what kind of body I shall get? Uh, that is human intelligence. By nature's way, we are getting body, but that is on the selection of the nature according to my work. If I work like animal, I get animal body. If I work as demigod, I get demigod body. If I act as trees, uh, then you get tree body. If you act like dog, you get dog's body, nature's way. That's why you find so many varieties of body. Okay, any questions? Uh, Prabhuji, one question. Hmm. Uh, Prabhupada just mentioned uh, the body is determined based on what we do. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, what we wish for is not, uh, not matters at all? Matters. Um, what I mean, we what do, we, if what, what we if we are doing something different than we than what we wish? Usually, our work is according to our desires. Some desires are fulfilled in this life; some are unfulfilled, and combinedly, we get another body. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what Prabhupada mentioned in a way that. Some people don't like wearing clothes, proper clothes. Then they get a tree body because they want to expose themselves. Some like to sleep a lot. Then they get a body of a bear. They can sleep six months. Some people eat other living entities like animals. Then they get a body like a lion because it's their desire. So they get a body of a carnivore so they can continue fulfilling their desire. So nature's way, based on how we act in this life, we are awarded a body to fulfill those desires. Any other question? So, so Babaji, like uh, for, for Lord Krishna himself, he, he took, uh, you know, he took different forms. One says uh, Lord Ram and then he comes as Krishna in his next birth. So is it is it true that he, he went into different uh, bodies, number one? Okay. And second question is, the purpose of uh, Mahavarata was, was, was the battle between Dharma and uh, Adharma. But what was the purpose of Ramayana? Okay. Now, coming back to your first question, Prabhu, these forms of the Lord exist eternally. So, it is, they are all expansions of Krishna, like Vaman, Rama, Narsimha, they are all expansions of Krishna. They all have their own planets in the spiritual world. And they all simultaneously coexist. And they come in different yugas. So it is not that Krishna, when we say Krishna appeared again as Rama, does not mean that Krishna changed the body. Krishna's body is eternal. This will come where Krishna says that my body is eternal. And uh, we know that when Krishna was hit by an arrow, um, that was a benediction Krishna gave as Lord Ram that in my next incarnation, so Krishna said, in, Rama said, in my next incarnation, 
you will become the cause of my ending the earthly pastimes and then he when he was hit krishna was on the krishna sat on the chariot and uh, krishna along with the chariot flew at the speed of wind like zup and then he went up brahma and shiva saw krishna going back so there is no um, change of body is it all right your first question prabhu yes prabhu okay and second question rama is maryada purushottam these are leela avatars means they come and perform certain leelas and they set a good example for the society to follow is it all right yeah any other question anyone has yeah prabhu ji uh, we are hearing rare cases uh, if few people remember past life as well is it true prabhu ji we rem- can you repeat the question again prabhu remember past life animals uh, memories uh, prabhu ji all uh, past life a few people said it uh, past life i born uh, some other place uh, i grown up some other place i remember all my past lives yeah is it true prabhu ji yeah yeah not everyone some people get the vision and uh, they can remember their past life and then um, it's a mercy of the lord go ahead why we are not remember prabhu ji most of the people don't remember yeah oh, it's oh. The, it's the nature of this that's how material world is designed because uh, we have a desire to enjoy and then just the desire remains and facility is given so we can do what we desire because uh, most of the people who remember past life goes through traumas of how they died what all difficulties they went through it's very painful like you know sometime when it's a suffering situation we don't want to remember that okay prabhu but there are unlimited suffering that we have been going through it is said the most suffering situation is death and all that all that people have done to us it's then our desire is to be happy and enjoy it will be defeated so lord has arranged in such a way mm-hmm. okay yeah. any other question my side that's it prabhu and then there is one question why there are so many animals born here because everywhere people are eating meat okay to to the extent i can understand there are 8.4 million species the soul is transmigrating into different different species the reason there are so many species is because so many desires every species has a particular advantage like uh, uh, the eagle the eagle eye is prominent and the dog's the dog's smell is prominent so based on our desire we get a particular species all right we prabhu, go, prabhu ji yeah. one one question prabhu yeah ji. okay uh, uh tree also have a soul yeah yeah is is okay. that your question yes prabhu ji yeah anything that has growth that has death that has uh, by products it's a matter of because of the presence of soul matter change because of the int- presence of the soul the moment a child body dies the child will not grow will not uh, become diseased will not become old nothing will happen they will not create by products it's just there is no difference between a dead body and a car and a sofa it's just matter anyway that, yeah go ahead that in the case so we are cutting the trees and eating vegetarians also we are eating the fruits and everything right prabhu ji 
so that is also wrong right yeah we don't necessarily cut the trees but we eat the fruits and other things and that's why krishna says that people if they eat what they are not what is not offered to me they also eat only sins even vegetarians at the same time now two principles first thing why we eat this because living entity can eat another living entity only like we cannot eat nuts and bolts and uh, car and uh, screw drivers we cannot eat those things we have to eat living entities living entity means grains um fruits vegetables now krishna himself says what all things he accepts then like uh, vegetables fruits grains milk milk products so already mentioned in scriptures what is permissible beyond that anything we eat there will be a karma that we create and uh, um but if we eat without offering to krishna because there is some violence involved uh, we are eating only sins krishna says so that's why anything we eat we should offer to krishna and krishna removes all the sins because we have to live on other living entities is it all right yeah, yeah more yes, more will come in the ninth chapter what we can eat and all these topics comes when krishna speaks about patram pushpam phalam toyam name bhakta prachati you can offer me these items and i with love and i will accept it and fourth chapter krishna says if you don't offer then you will eat sin so these two chapters will cover this concept more any other question yeah that's it prabhu ji thanks so my dear prabhu ji next next session wanted to ask you know when when we are talking about plants and trees why is tulsi considered as sacred in <laughs> in, in our uh, hindu mythology why yeah. does it get a special place now in our tradition uh, tulsi is actually a spiritual personality she is an eternal consort of krishna and uh, she has appeared on this planet just for the sake of the upliftment of the human society there is a very big history of how tulsi why tulsi came down by the mercy of radha rani radha rani instructed tulsi that you take birth in the material world and when she came down um, then there is a um, um, and uh, there are many many prayers in the vedas that anyone who offer water to tulsi his sin of become, killing a brahmana is also forgiven so she is not another living entity is it all right yeah prabhuji okay anyone else has any question anu prabhu rat shikar prabhu yeah i have no questions prabhuji thanks anyone else no problem okay no problem now now this is this is another story of uh, mara chitra ketu um, he he was a king of the whole earth planet and he had no son and uh, he was very much aggrieved one time narad muni appeared and narad muni asked mara chitra ketu why are you so much grief stricken and marachit ketu said because i have no son then narad muni said i can give you a son but he will be the cause of your happiness he will be the cause of your of your misery um, marachit ketu said i have no problem but at any cost i need a son narad muni said all right here is a payasam you feed it to your um, eldest wife your first wife he had many queens the first wife and she will become pregnant and uh, because he will be the cause of her happiness and distress you name him harsha shoka harsha is happiness and shok is misery name him harsha shoka and this queen became pregnant and this beautiful child was born is he he, he was called harsha shoka and marachita ketu happiness had no bounds and uh, 
Maharaj Chaitanya Ketu started giving special attention to the first wife, first queen, because uh, she was the cause of his happiness. She gave birth to her Sashoka and all the other queens felt neglected. And at some point of time, they became very envious because the king was giving all the time to the first wife. So they all they all planned, and one day they fed poison to Harsha Shoka. And uh, Harsha Shoka was in his inner chamber, and the the maid servant. She came and she saw Harsha Shoka mouth was foaming. Foam was coming from his mouth and he was unconscious and he has no heartbeat. So whatever she was carrying, uh, she was shocked and she shouted and uh, uh, whatever water pot she was carrying, it created a huge sound and uh, the news spread very fast and Marat Chitraketu came to know that her Shoka no more and Marat Chitaketu was uh, heartbroken and uh, he was walking down his corridor and uh, it is said that uh, he was so much in pain and he was walking and falling and he got up and he walked two steps and again he fell down and again he got up and walked two steps again he fell down he lost all composure he lost all stability and uh, he went through so much shooting pain that uh, he was almost at the verge of death and um, then he saw his own child Harsha Shoka who was the only cause of his happiness forming from his mouth without heartbeat and this person in blue is actually Harsha Shoka. That time Narad Muni came. And Narad Muni asked Marat Chetu Ketu, what happened? Marat Chetu Ketu, barely in a voice, pointed out with tears in his eyes towards the dead body of her son. And Narad Muni said, I told you, he will give you misery and he will give you happiness. He already gave you happiness. Now he is giving you misery. And then Narad Muni wanted to show mercy to Marat Chetu Ketu. Then Narad Muni asked Harsha Shoka, Harsha Shoka, get up. And Harsha Shoka came back to life. This is Narad Muni, eternally liberated personality. And Narad Muni asked Harsha Shoka, why did you leave your father and your mother? And Harsha Shoka spoke, although he was so small, he could not speak, but he spoke because of the power of Narad Muni. And Harsha Shoka said, which father, which mother? I have so many fathers based on the different body I have been through and I have so many brothers. According to my admissible and permissible karma, I was allowed to live in this body for these many months and now I have moved on to my next destination. Why did you call me back? And when these words came, now Maharaj Chitra Ketu had already heard, heard this knowledge before but it never striked him. But when these words came from the mouth of Harsha Shoka, immediately Maharaj Chitra Ketu developed renunciation from this material world. And uh, uh, he gained his lost composure. And right after that moment, Narad Muni said, I'm sorry to call you back. You can continue in your journey. And Harsha Shoka again died. In a way, the soul moved on and continued his journey. And this is another story from scriptures how the soul is eternal but the body is temporary. Is it all right? Yes, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, one question, Prabhuji, final mm. question. All right. Uh, people are dying uh, various reasons, right? Uh, if people are died accident, people are died yeah. diseases. It is also based on the karma, Prabhuji. Yeah, yeah, everything has a karma cycle. Our number of breaths in this birth is fixed, Prabhuji. And some people die like a laptop, sometimes it fails because of disk failure, sometimes uh, screen failure, sometimes memory failure. Likewise, sometimes heart failure, sometimes lungs failure, sometimes kidney failure. It's all machine. If you dissect the body, what do you see? 
you see there is a heart there is a lung there is a kidney then there is blood blood vessels bones bones major lot of body is water i think like 70 80% is water in the body so this is body it's all material elements and some of the elements may fail and uh, then the soul leaves once the soul leaves you can replace the organ you can put a new heart new lung new kidney you cannot do anything once the soul leaves you cannot bring it back to life any machine any any material machine can be repaired you can change the part which is broken and you can repair you can you can repair a washing machine refrigerator it may be expensive it may be cheaper to buy a new machine than repairing the old one agreed but you can repair any machine but you cannot repair the body nobody could repair the body because it's not a material machine it's a it, it's it's grow it's its existence is because of the spirit soul once it leaves body is termed as dead any other question otherwise i am done for today and then we cover i was planning to cover the entire chapter today but i realized i cannot <laughs> so so we cover the next two sections next week thank you prabhu ji i am very very grateful to all of you thank you all for joining and showing interest in uh, understanding geeta if you have more and more questions will come somehow or other if you can finish these 18 chapters um we cover either a chapter in a week or two weeks like second chapter is one of the biggest chapter third chapter we cover in one week fourth chapter again we cover in one week and uh, once you can finish this 18 chapters um there is no question it is said that exists whose answer does not have in bhagavad gita and i recommend you may get a copy of bhagavad gita by shila prabhupad and as we are reading bhagavad gita try to read bhagavad gita along with it and any question please ask and uh, uh, maybe once in two months or something i will also would like to keep in personal touch with all of you and any questions which you you may not ask here you can ask me personally and that way we'll try to understand this subject matter deeply very grateful to all of you shila prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakta bindu ki jai thank you all very much hari krishna prabhu ji thank you krishna prabhu ji thank you prabhu ji hari krishna